is up guys today I'm going to do a cop trace for you and I'm going to explain to you exactly what it's used for um, how to do the bait up yes. I am using the BKK the new BKK it is an 8-0 it is an offset circle look works quite nicely for the cobs seeing as they like to hook themselves especially because they bite so aggressively I am using a 4x5 combo power swivel uh, as I like to fish a fixed trace for cob. Uh, reason being is because obviously the aggressive bite gives you a direct uh, pull on the cob and then you have a very big, uh, a better setup rate, uh, hook set rate. And then a size 3 power swivel as well as some um, 0.75 maxima line clear and then our homemade edible angle you can see there it's got glow in the dark foam and uh, what I like to do sometimes with the uh, dangles is I like to push a rattler into the foam um, because it just gives a little bit more vibration in the water and then it also like, gives it a little bit of a, a noise factor uh, in the water which uh, attracts a cob to your bait uh, so that he comes and tries it and then obviously the glow in the dark foam uh, so if you're fishing murky waters or if you're fishing uh, in the night, which sometimes you do for cob, um, yeah, it just acts as an attractant uh, in the water. And uh, all you're going to fish on these um, glow in the dark foam uh, dangles is white baits, strictly white baits uh, in, in the night. What you can do is you can take a sardine belly and put it on the side of the chocker. Um, or, or the white bait uh, that works quite nicely. Uh, so yeah, let's get into the video. So for this trace, we're going to start off by taking our maxima, and we are going to measure out our hook snoot. So what I like to do for edible traces is make the hook snoot slightly longer than normal, um, just so that it floats up higher uh, and that sort of stuff. And then your trace is also longer. So I measure out a meter. So from my hand to my shoulder is roughly a meter. And I snip it off. So you're going to need scissors and pliers for this video. So I snip it off. Then I take my circle look. And that same, um, that same snell knot that I used in my last video, or in the video that you saw of the full metal jacket and the bar trace. So there we go. Make it like that. So you hold it. One tag in that side. Take the rest of the nylon. Make a loop like normal so that you have two tag ends running on either side. You have the tag end, the main line, then on this side you have another tag end. You have another tag end over there and the main line. So what you want to do for this is you want to hold the main line and you want to wrap around once like that make one wrap okay and then two wraps so there you can see it crosses over like normal there you go and then you want to wrap it two three four five so that it comes out like that with the wraps. I don't really see it. But you want to wrap it so that it goes downward. So there we go. Then you take this tag end on this side and you gently pull it. Just untwist any tangles on the bottom. Gently pull it. Right. Then you just make sure that it's coming out nicely. There you go, just like that. Keep pulling it until you get to this point here. Until you get to that point. Right. And then it's there, just make sure that this tag end runs along the back end of the hook. Right. Then you continue to pull. And push this section down until it's to the bottom. Tighten it up a little bit, not too tight. 
but just enough, like that. Okay, you can see it's semi-tight. Right, then you take the other tag end, the end of the line. What is very important about a circle hook is when you take that tag end through, you take it from the back, take it from the back and you go through the eye towards the bob of the hook. So you go, take it from the back of the hook, in through the eye, from the back, in through the eye, like that, and then pull it through. Boom, just like that. Alrighty. Then your next step is to pull that knot back up towards the eye. Okay. Lubricate it a little bit. Grab your pliers. Hold that tag end like that. And pull the knot tight. Okay, there you go. The nylon snip. Right, there we go. There's a snow. You want to just pull it up against the R. Nice and tight. There we go. There's your snow knot. Done and dusted. Alright. I'm going to take this tag end. Okay. I'll take this tag end. Snip off any excess. There we are. And now you'll see the lucky thing about these hooks is due to the bend on the back and the way we've done the snow, it actually holds the hook nice and straight. So it's not like bent up or bent back or anything like that, it's nice and straight. And the bait will sit like that in the water nicely. Okay? Now once you've done this part, you want to grab your combination swivel. Alright? And you want to grab the bigger section, the bigger swivel, so the bigger section of the swivel, the bigger swivel, and you tie it onto that end with a figure of eight, just a normal standard figure of eight. Boom. 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 Oh. Yeah. Remember, when doing a figure of eight, always open it up. You're supposed to guard it down. Sometimes they can be a bit stubborn. There we go. I've opened it up. So let's form the nice figure of eight. Haven't tightened it completely. Like that. And to put it down gently towards there. Lubricate it. Okay, pull it closed a little bit. It's not completely closed, but it is getting near to that point. Grab the pliers. Grab the pliers. Hold it inside that R, like that. Pull down slowly. Pull it closed. And then down and lock it. Nice and tight. Cut your tag end off. Like that. And there we go. There's your swivel. It's tied on nicely. So then you have this swivel. So this swivel here will be for your sinker. And that will be tied to the rest of the nylon. So the way I like to make it is I take another meter of this. 0.75 you can make it thicker if you want but I like to keep it moderately the same then I take it and I make from there to my second shoulder so there and I cut it off and then to the bigger the biggest eye within the combination swivel the tire figure of eight Three. There you go. Pull it 
open. Lubricated. Yeah. Unlock it. There you go. Now you can see they're both tied on. The figure of eight. I wanna focus. There we go. You can see there. You want to? Cut the tag end off. Then go to the tag end of the long piece of nylon and tie it on your size 3 swivel with a figure of 8. One, two, three, to the back, up. Open your figure of 8. Up, so it makes a nice eight shape like that. Pull it slightly tight, not too tight. Lubricate. Pull it down gently. Don't lock it all the way. Lubricate and then pull it down and lock it. There's your figure of eight. It's sitting quite nicely. Over there. Right. Then snip it. Boom. And there you go. Done and dusted. So you've got your hook snoot there. And then you have a clear piece which I use as if it's a, a nylon leader attached to my braid leader. So the reason I use it this way is if there are bigger fish in the area and I want to swap over, have a thicker section of nylon, um, I don't have to tie it to my leader, cut it off, put a new thicker on, I can just change it with the trace and it'll be sorted like that. So generally what I do is I take um, traces for smaller cob, um, moderate cob, so smaller cob would be up until about 2 kilos then moderate would be from 2 kilos to about 10 kilos and then um, if I'm really looking for the big boys or I'm fishing for a variety of flatfish and a cob then I'll use uh, like point nano and like a nano uh, circle look or tenor circle look and then um, yeah that's how I'll fish for the cob, for the bigger cob. Dangle that I use of this go on like that. So it's the glow in the dark dangle. It's about five centimeters long. It's made out of a 180 pound um, braid leader. Uh, if you want to find out how to make a different type of edible dangle, go hop onto Zander De Beer's um, YouTube channel, Zuluk Fishing. Uh, he actually does a video and he shows you how to make uh, an edible spangle. Uh, I've modified it a little bit by the foam and the way that I put it on the hook, uh, just to my preferred method. But if you want to go have a look at that, uh, I would definitely suggest that you go and hop onto his channel and have a look at that. Another trace that I like to carry with me is a J-hook trace. So that's a J-hook swearing. And the thing with the J-hook is the reason why we use a J-hook as well is you have your bait directly on the shank of the hook um, with a bit of foam as you can see this is also glow in the dark um, and what this allows for is if the smaller cob are around um, or your cob are feeding very pickishly and they're not taking you completely flat uh, we call those or the guys in east london call them a snatch cob i believe uh, where they take you down on a hit and they don't commit um, so what they do is they actually grab the bait shake shake and then they drop the bait instantly um, so what you can do with a j-hook is in that case is the minute you get the bait just swap it um, but yeah here in case then we don't really get them a lot but when you do have the smaller cob and they're being very pickish and they're not taking the, da uh, the circle hook with the dangle then you whack on this trace put a bait on the back of this hook here 
throw it in and then uh, yeah, have some fun. Uh, so yeah, it's the same basic method. Got my hook snoot attached to the size 4-5 swivel with 0.75 nylon. And then again with the leader story, the same. 0.75 nylon to a size 3 swivel. Uh, so yeah, that's my traces um, that have helped me catch plenty cob. Um, I don't always take a photo of a cob because it's, it's not really a, a fish to take a photo of unless you catch like a 5 to 10 kilo one or a 7 kilo one or something like that, you know, a decent size. Um, but yeah, I'm still hunting down that big cob. And uh, yeah, the, the baits and stuff you'd use for um, cob would be like prawns, hockey legs, chocker, um, chocker with sardine belly on the back, uh, sardine heads, um, that sort of stuff. And uh, the reason why we use the glow foam, I don't know if I mentioned it in the beginning of the video, um, but the reason why we use the glow foam is, oh no, I haven't mentioned that, I'll cut that out. So with the with these types of traces and the baits that you use for these, it works quite nicely when fishing um, let's say an area like for us KZM boys um, banks uh, you're not getting those diamonds and stuff like that there's lots of brown skates around there's lots of cob um, and there might be a possibility of a spinner or two uh, whack on this this boy here with the circle look and the dangle um, and then yeah, you can have fun with variety if you find you're getting bitten off then change to a 60 pound bike trace and if you find you're still getting bitten off on that then you can change to a 90 pound but I'll definitely, definitely recommend starting with this um, and then working your way up obviously just because of the movement in the water and then like I mentioned earlier the fish are getting picky, whack this guy on the reason why I don't like using J-hooks is also if a spinner or something jump, uh, jumps on um, tends to gobble that whole bait up one time and then he bites you off on the nylon which is quite close to the same the hook with the rest of the circle hook he has to pump the circle hook and he has to pump the bait. So generally what happens is you'll bite, 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 go over the tank of the hook, pump, get hooked, and then the hook is sitting outside of his mouth and the line stays outside of his mouth as long as you keep constant pressure. Then you use it, it's a little bit harder or a little bit more difficult for him to bite you off. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative, I hope it helped you guys. And uh, yeah, please you guys do catch fish, um, post it on Facebook, tag me in the post if you use my traces. Um, yeah, I'd really like to see your uh, feedback. Uh, if you have any ideas or things you want me to show you, please do comment down below in the video. Um, but yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.